Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Glazer's Geezer Garage. Today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do the first episode of Geezer Chat. And joining me today is my grandson, my oldest grandson, the way, one that made me a grandpa the first time. Liam, come on in here, have a seat. Thanks, Poppy, for having me. No problem. <laughs> Liam calls me Poppy. I love that. Um, as I told you guys before, Liam is doing all the editing on my videos. He does a fantastic job. He uh, has some new ideas. He's been really studying and reading up on how to do YouTube videos and the channel. And he controls the whole channel for me. So it really gives me time to work on the cars. And he does, he's the brainchild behind the channel. So I'm just uh, enjoying it, spending time with him. Uh, it's, it's really a lot of fun. So, uh, but today what we're going to talk about, this car sitting behind me, I've owned 52 years. We've talked about it before on the channel. I think our first uh, uh, episode we did, or the second, one of the first or second we did, we talked a little bit about this, and we said we were going to do one episode just on the 56. And I figured what a great time to do it, but in geezer chat. So here we are, and Liam has asked me several times, Poppy, what about the history on that car? Can, you, can we do a video on it? I, I think more he's interested in it and the history of it. I haven't given him a lot of details of it, but bits and pieces. So that's what we're going to do here today. So thanks for joining us and let's let's get into this thing. Okay, so because I've owned the car 52 years, you can see I have a pretty long list here. I just gave myself some bullet points so I wouldn't forget the whole story because it's very interesting. So let's start at the beginning. I know this, let me make a long story longer. Um, my parents, I was, a, I was a junior in high school, just finished my football season, had just been voted captain of the football team. My parents tell us we're moving to Arizona. I was devastated. I was very upset at my parents, but you know, that's what children do. They go where their parents go. And so we moved to Arizona, but on the way out, my dad let me drive a big 26 foot U-Haul through Texas. He knew I was upset. He thought that might help me out a little bit. And halfway through Texas, he said, I, I wish there's something I could do for you i know you're upset and i said well let me buy an old car when i get to arizona he said that's a deal we'll do that so uh we moved to arizona and he said you're gonna have to get a summer job raise the money but you can buy an old car and so i started getting anxious so worked my junior year left the wake getting ready to play football the following year my senior year started working for my uncle brick lane company i was a labor um got anxious about two weeks before school was out i started looking and what did I find? I found a 56 Chevy two-door hardtop two blocks away from my house on the same road. Two blocks? Two blocks. Wow. So you know what I did? I walked two blocks and started looking in the carport to see what I could find. And I found this black 56 Chevy covered in about an inch of dust. If anybody knows Arizona, they get the dust storms. And this thing must have been through about five of them. But anyway, uh, I waited for my father to get home begged him to go look at it. He said, you haven't even made any money yet. He said, let me go get a shower. Let me get ready. And he took his time, but finally he did something. He was out in the backyard doing something, did, went to the bedroom, did something. We get in his old Chevy wagon, we go down the street. We talked to the guy. My dad said, does this thing run? The guy said, well, there's no transmission in it, but you can start it up because uh, there's a mid mount, a 56, 55, 57 Chevy, so you can fire it up. So we put the old battery out of the station wagon put a little gas in the carburetor. What, what do you know? That it was a 283, somebody had replaced the 265. Thing wow. fired right up. My dad said, the yes. guy wanted $500. That's all he wanted Five, for. 500. My dad right. said, if it runs, I will pay you $250 for it. The guy said, it's a deal. It fired up. My dad reached in his pocket. My dad never carried cash. He gave the guy $250 and he told me to get in the back of the Chevy wagon and get the log chain. We're gonna pull it home. My dad had a hunch we were gonna buy this car. He kept his promise to me. That's, that's pretty amazing. That's amazing. So that's the story how I got it. So we drug this thing home. I saved, I worked the first week, first paycheck went to my dad, paid him back the 250 bucks. Second paycheck went some Krager wheels and tires. Because the funny story that in that two week period when I was working construction, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Phoenix, Arizona, but there's a place called Fountain Hills, and it was a housing development that was an hour outside of town. You had to drive through desert to get there. But the laborers, we'd always start at five in the morning because it was so hot there. 
And we were actually racing one of the bricklayers out this highway. It was called Beeline Highway. And that, <laughs> there's another story about Beeline Highway. So remember what I said about Beeline Highway. So this guy had just bought a brand new Mazda pickup truck, rotary engine. They were brand new. And he thought he was the fastest thing in the world. Oh, yeah. So he passed us up. We're flying. And my cousin said, my cousin Roy was with me. And Roy said, you really going to let that foreign car pass you? And I said, I don't know. I, don't, I said, the tires are bald. I don't know if they're good. I don't know what this, because I had stuck the transmission back in it. Okay, okay, transmission. So and the, the, what we found out, there was a tooth missing on second gear. So I would wind it out in oh, first gear, that's... shift into third gear. So we were in third gear, and I just put the pedal down. Pedal down. I was sitting in a fiberglass bucket seat, and my cousin was sitting on a bucket seat, oh, a five-gallon bucket. That is hilarious. He was sitting on a five-gallon bucket, no seatbelts. No. So anyway, make a long story longer. We actually passed the guy at 116 mile an hour, he said. Got up to the job site, the tire went flat, so that's why my first paycheck was tires and wheels. But he started fixing it up, and now go. let's go back to Beeline Highway. Uh, we're from the Akron, Ohio area. If anybody knows Akron, Ohio, knows cars, there's a gentleman that's from here, he's passed, rest his soul, Art Arfons. Uh, Art Arfons had the first jet-powered vehicle out there and he was very famous back then. I actually went to high school with his son, Tim. And Tim and I knew each other, not well, but we, we knew each other. He was a class president our senior year. Um, so good guy, um, had a couple of turbine powered go-karts and stuff himself, <laughs> but they were coming to Beeline Dragway, which is on Beeline Highway. And so my cousins and I, we jumped in my 56, because I knew they were coming, I knew it was summertime, and Tim usually traveled with his dad during the exhibition races. Okay. So I said, Tim might be there. Maybe I'll see my buddy Tim. And we went out there, and sure enough, we went to piss, and Tim was there. We started oh, talking. That's so cool. And what happened was, I we, we stayed till 1, 2 o'clock in the morning and pissed talking to the Arfons crew. It was so much fun. We were having a great time. We come out in the parking lot. My 56 Chevy was gone. Somebody had stolen it. Um, I was devastated because I was going to go back to school my senior year with a nice new car, playing football, and well, it got eliminated. So without my 56, I called the police station several times. They called my mother back and said, please tell him to quit calling us. If we find that car, we will let you guys know. Uh, so I started looking at other cars. I looked at probably at least 50 other, 55 to 57 Chevys. Some of them running, some of them not, but they were all rust free because we were in Arizona in 1973. So the cars weren't that old, rust free. Some of them wrecked, some of them not. But there was, a, I had a hunch that I was gonna get this car back. And when you know it, three months later, we get a letter in the mail that said, your car has been in impoundment since this date. That date was three days after it was stolen. Wow. So we don't know why they didn't notify us before that, or somebody really wanted the car and was kind of hiding it. But my mo mother, she was very, let's just say, a stern conversation with the police department. And we were able to pick it up that evening with a trailer yeah. just for the towing bill. Uh, oh, yeah. Just for the $15 towing bill, no oh, story. Yeah. Granny's, granny's like that, yeah. I can tell yeah, that. Yeah, you know granny. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. What, wanna talk about the rest of it maybe inside the car? Yeah, let's, let's go. Maybe we'll sit in here, give you guys a little feel what this car is like to sit in. This side. All right. All right. All right. So this is what it's like to set in the '56 Chevy to the hard top. So where were we, Liam? Uh, we were talking about the tow. So what happened after the tow? So the tow. So I got the car back, uh, stripped out. I did, did have the fenders, the hood, no wheels and tires, just some old ones. Somebody shoved back on it. Uh, motor was gone, didn't have much of an interior in it already to steal, so really didn't lose much there, just a couple of fiberglass seats I bought from Lopers Automotive in Phoenix, Arizona, that was our big, that was our summit racing of Phoenix, was Lopers Automotive. But anyway, I, uh, you know, I got busy, had my senior year playing football, but every evening, every weekend, I'd piddle on the car, I'd do this, I'd do that, I'd build a sand buggy in between there, but I was always working and cleaning on the car, and my thought process was, I had a cousin back here in Akron, Ohio, 
uh, Paul. Uh, Paul was a big time drag racer, big time engine builder. And my whole thought process was, I'm going to go back to Akron. I'm going to build a drag car out of this thing. So I started looking. I bought a Dana rear end, Dana 60, off of a state highway patrolman, believe it or not. He was a big Chrysler collector. But the Dana 60s back then, that was the rear end you built for a race car. I mean, when my cousin found out I bought that Dana 60 rear end for $130, he couldn't believe it. Uh, so anyway, I kind of put that in, didn't know what I was doing, and then things moved, moved ahead. And about a year after I graduated high school, I decided to go ahead, buy a trailer, load the 56 up, come back to Akron. Uh, wasn't running, uh, but I did have slicks on the back, the Dana rear end. You can see in the pictures. Um, and I, I drug it back to Akron. And because I got back to Akron, didn't have much, lived with a buddy of mine. Uh, funny story there, it was an old house. It used to be a garage, but they closed the garage door and made a house out of it. Well, we tore the, we tore the wood partition for the garage door back out, slid my 56 in there and put it back up. So this, my 56 was sitting in the living room of this house. And so, but we were young guys, we were, you know, in our teens. But anyway, and it's, it's set like that for a long time. Then I, life went on. Uh, I built a home, got married, uh, started working on the car, changed careers, uh, moved to Georgia, drug the car to Georgia. Uh, just as when I got in Georgia, just got settled in, I started, I got the parts of the car, I got, the, I put it in the garage, but I got all the parts out, started doing a little stuff on it, decided to move back to Akron, I got a good job offer for one of the companies I was repping at the time, and we moved back to Akron, so needless to say, the car kind of set just idle for, oh, it set idle for 24 years, actually, because that's, in between there, when I got, yeah, that's... when I got back to Akron, um, we, we built a home, right? And uh, Liam's familiar with the house because yes. he remembers it. He was old enough to remember it. He was little. But we, we left there almost nine years ago. But I had a nice three-car garage where I could work on the car. And then the interesting part about this story is um, I had a health scare uh, when I was 38 years old. I don't talk about it too much, but um, I had cancer. And uh, they removed my right kidney. And after it was all over, uh, my wife, my lovely wife, said, what was your biggest concern when you thought you might be facing a big problem? And I said, well, it was you and my two girls, which was Liam, Liam's mom's the oldest, my oldest daughter, and my young, youngest daughter, Jessica. I was really worried that who would care for them because I was only 38. They were young girls. And I said, that, you know, some other things like the 56. And she she didn't know what to say. She, she, she just went upstairs. She came back down a little later and said, I really had no idea that car meant that much to you, that when you possibly are faced with a big health problem, that came to mind that you never got to finish. And she said, why don't we sell some investments we have and why don't you finish that car? Well, that was the wrong thing to say <laughs> because $22,000 later and 20 months later, the 56 was done. Check this picture out. Okay, a couple things I forgot. Uh, Liam, where, oh, there he is. Okay, he's playing games with me. So a couple things I forgot, Liam, was while I was um, in that period right there after I got back from Arizona a couple years later, I decided when I was going to build a house, I needed the money to put some money to put down on the property. And my brother Jay actually bought my 56 from me. And for uh, $1,200, 300 for the trailer, and 900 for the Chevy, the title never changed hands. About a year and a half later, I was in my house, and my brother Jay was trying to work his way through college, and he didn't need money for college. So what I do? He sold my trailer out from underneath me, so I gave him the 900 bucks back for the Chevy. Never had to change, never got the title out of my file box. So, great That's story. Hilarious. Great story. Yeah, Uncle Jay would be back out. <laughs> All right, so we now picture we're in a new house. I built my first house when I was 20 years old, believe it or not. Had a nice three-bedroom ranch, two-car garage. Started working, got comfortable with the house payments. My wife was working. <clears throat> Decided to uh, start working on the 56. Uh, 
Started taking part, doing things, painted the frame, did some other things. Changed how I mounted the Dana rear end, did some other things. And when you know, about five years later, I changed careers. I decided to take a sales job selling machinery to the tire industry. And in order to do that, I was a local rep, meaning I had to live in the territory where I sold. So my wife and I moved to just outside the Atlanta area, Atlanta, Georgia area. And what did I do? Bought a trailer, tugged the car down to Atlanta, Georgia, only had a single car garage, didn't really have room to work on it. Didn't really do much there, kind of started piddling with it a little bit. And then what did I do? That's when I moved back to Akron. And that's when I built my home that I was in for some of the years I mentioned earlier, had a three car garage and had room to work on it. And that's where I restored the car. So, so that's kind of filling in some gaps I left out. So uh, yeah, so it was, it, it was, we rolled that thing out. I don't remember the date. I remember it was a summer, summer day. We, we, we'll check the dates out, but it, uh, my mom and my dad and my youngest daughter, Jesse, she, they wanted to ride in it. So we went to a local cruising. It was a very, very proud moment for me. I, I waited 24 years to, to drive this car again. So it was well worth it. Any of you car guys, you've done that, you've waited that long, you know what it's like. So um, anyway, that's where we were at today. Uh, but since then, now picture this, it had a stock 454. I didn't go small block, I went big block. Stock 454 with a turbo 400. Still had the Dana rear end. As a matter of fact, it still has the Dana rear end in it. Uh, we'll show you some more detailed pictures here in a little bit. But um, So you, I probably drove that thing around for, I don't know, uh, that was 85 when I came back from Atlanta. So in just drove the car around a little bit, did this, did that. Well, now I get the itch. I get the itch. I want to build a drag car. Well, there's a funny story behind that. You know this story. I mean, you heard it, and he enjoyed the rest of this story, and I'll show you why. So I went to my wife, lovely wife, and said, I'd like to build a race car. She said, I'll tell you what. You, when I get my swimming pool, you can get, have your race car. And this is no lie. You can ask her. Two weeks later, they were excavating for the swimming pool. Oh, yeah. And so we put a pool in the house. Uh, I waited probably another four or five years because, you know, that takes a little bit of money to build a swimming pool. And then, and that's when I decided to build a race car. That's another episode. We'll go into that. I have some photos. I don't have the car anymore. I sold it. But I got a lot of nice videos, a lot of pictures of the car. It was a great build. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It was a 540 cubic inch big block. I ran the quarter mile on 947. It was a very fast car. So thank you to my wife. She thanked me for the pool. I thanked her for the race car. But right about the time I was going to build that. Oh, it's probably big old. Sorry, they're doing some uh, big hauling down the road here. They're building some houses. So sorry for the interruption. But um, um, where was I? So we were... I had the race car, everything was great, but right when I was building the race car, I thought, and let's back up a little bit, I'm sorry, let's back up a little bit. I did, the next thing that happened was I got the itch to put a big, bigger motor in this Black Beauty here. I, my cousin, Paul, who was the engine builder, he said, he calls me one day, he said, Don, he said, I just bought a Pro Street Nova out of Boardman, Ohio, that has a original LS 454 crate engine in it. He said, I'm building a big motor, 700 inch motor for this. But he said, they say this, this motor has very few miles on it. He said, I'll sell it to you. We'll go through the whole thing to make sure it is what it is. So I got that motor for $4,500. We went through it, we took it apart. The cross hatching was still in the cylinder wall. We updated a lot of the stuff, the rockers and stuff to, uh, and the valves, remember the severe stainless duty valves. He had some neat ideas. Uh, in those old motors, they were solid lifter uh, cams. Uh, you couldn't put real, real heavy springs on because it it would uh, ruin the cam camshaft. But he found this new lifter that had a laser cut hole that oiled right on the cam lobe. So he said, we'll go with it if we have a problem, I'll rebuild the motor for you. That those that system worked great. That, that was a very radical motor. It uh, 
ran fantastic. Um, I'll show you some videos on that too. But um, yeah, and so I had the big motor. But the problem is when I decided to build a race car, I said, I don't need this big motor. I even raced the car a couple of times. You see in the pictures here. Uh, but the problem was I actually turned an 1198 in this car with street tires. And that, this is a 3,800 pound car without me in it. So you know, pushing of almost 4,000 pounds down the quarter mile on 1198 is pretty fast on street tires. So it was a really healthy motor, but it really, I knew it was twisting up the car a little bit and I just didn't want to destroy such a beautiful car. So I decided to pull that motor out. I sold that motor to a guy in Denver, Colorado. He, he had sold his big racing rig and he was coming back to Pennsylvania, coming through Ohio. And he said, I'll pick it up Sunday morning. I said, okay. And his name was, what was his name? I'm trying to, uh, Billy? I forget his name. To make a long story short, he was a four-time national champion in this Camaro that he sold. Wow. And he was, I tried to sell that LS motor and the young, no criticism to you young guys, but everybody didn't know what an LS crate motor was. Uh -huh. And they were mistaking it with the new ones. They were mistaking it with an L L88. They were all, I got in arguments with guys and finally this 64 year old guy called me and said, is this a real LS 454 crate engine? I said, absolutely. He said, I want it. He brought, bring me the cash, counted the cash out. We put it up on his trailer. I even gave him the engine dolly just to make it easy. He rolled it up on his trailer. And uh, he was putting that in a 30, 30 some Chevy, uh, you know, coupe. So, uh, but that was a pretty radical thing. But anyway, I, I sold the motor. So now this thing's set without a motor for almost six, seven years. Um, uh, not sure exactly what it was, but uh, let me look at it here. I think I had 95 or 90 RPM. Um, why don't we cut it for a minute? I'm looking at my nose. Oh, I got you. Okay, good. Um, yeah, that was 2005. I put the LS 454 in it. Went ahead and changed the gears. I put a 456 gear in because I was going to go racing a couple of times. Um, go back to racing this thing. A guy followed me to the pits and he said, what are you doing racing that car? He said, I'll give you my whole rig. He had a Mach 1 Mustang a dually and a trailer, and he was going to give me all of it for the 56. If, if, because he didn't think it should be on the trail. I had, I have not heard this. Well, yeah, and that's what and my, my brother Jay was with me at the time, and we got so excited about the uh racing, and we agreed that probably racing the 56 wasn't the best thing, so we did both decided to get race cars, and that's when I built my drag car, and that's when my brother Jay bought a race car, and he ended up moving. And uh, it took me about three years of paying for my race cars, so we never got to race together too much. I did take my rig down to Winston-Salem and race one weekend with him, and we, we had a great time. After we went to the first cruise in, uh, I decided, since it was all fresh and clean, I decided to enter some car shows. Uh, one of my highlights of my time with the 56 was there was an indoor car show in the winter here in Akron, Ohio, called Rubber City Motorama. Uh, I'd gone to it the year before, I was really impressed. So I went all out, got a 10 by 20 boot, carpet, chrome stanchions, mirrors, everything. And uh, I won the Motor City, the Rubber City Motorama Award. Um, we'll show you a little clip of the trophy here and stuff, but it was, and the, and the following year, what was cool about the following year, they asked me to be a featured car and I didn't quite know what that meant. I just had to sign some documents saying I wouldn't hold it against, I would, they could use my photographs of my car. I had to sign a release document. And what that meant was, they told me I was gonna be in the entrance to this, there's a big rotunda, and I was gonna be one of four cars set up in the entrance then. And uh, what I didn't know was a friend of mine who had an enclosed car trailer at the time, because it was snowing out, come pick the car up. We were going down Main Street, getting ready to go into the John S. Knight Center, and there was a poster on every other light post and it, my car was on the poster. Uh, he said, man, I didn't know I was hauling a celebrity, but so that was a highlight of my time with the 56 as far as car shows. I entered probably 10 or 15, 20 car shows, won a lot of trophies, interior, engine compartment, uh, all kinds of uh, trophies, but I really, in, what I enjoy the most is just cruisings. 
just drive the car in, talk to my buddies, uh, chit chat a little bit, and then go home. So that's my idea, having fun with the 56 these days. Okay guys, so after the car is set without an engine, for like I said, five or six years, uh, I decided to, I moved into this facility here, we built another house. Uh, I have the, my garage, my dream garage. And if you want to check that out, check out, I think our first episode, mm -hmm. there's a tour of my shop here. Uh, but about eight years ago, we were able to build a ranch style home, what we call a retirement house. And I was able to build my shop here. Uh, really enjoying, can fit three cars in here at a time comfortably while I'm working on them. But um, what I stuck back in here was I took that same 454 block that I had in it the first time and we used only the block, because block and the main cap's the only thing we reused. Uh, bored it 30 over, put a four and a quarter stroke, so it's a 489 cubic inch big block. It's pushing about 550 horse. Right. Uh, went ahead and made it what I call an old man car. I put power steering, tilt wheel, uh, power brakes, so the car rides amazingly easy now. It's very easy to steer it, very easy. Brakes are great, so it's, it's just a fun car to ride. And as a matter of fact, we're going to take a cruise. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Click right here to subscribe and click down here to watch our last video on Corvettes at Carlisle. We'll see you guys later. Let's go, Poppy.